Yo, yo, what's up? It's Derp here with another uh, video about Iron Mace, Nexon, and a bunch of little updates. A lot of people have been asking me about what's happening with the court cases. Uh, we know we have the appeals case in the United States and the case in Korea. Um, so I kind of wanted to do a quick update video, keep it quick, kind of going off the cuff. Um, I'm going to put up some examples and stuff like this but essentially what is happening right now is that the case in korea to the best of my knowledge has been postponed uh not indefinitely nothing like that but nexon they delayed it at uh, in about august because there was ten thousand pages uh from nexon that was filed and then iron race also filed ten thousand pages of their own evidence so there's 20,000 pages of this evidence that needs to be looked through. And there was also this hint in there that Nexon was also undergoing some other issue, right? So they there had been re, a delay had been requested by not only the courts, but uh, I think Nexon as well. So we now know that Nexon was under an under investigation by the Korean FTC for stealing $420 million from their MapleStory customers on top of possibly cheating several other customer bases from other games through manipulating the chances to get specific items through the loot box system and all kinds of other shady stuff. They were lowering the chances to get good items when you would gamble through loot boxes and other systems. Uh, so some of the items actually had a 0% chance of being pulled. And some of the upgrades to items had a 0% chance of being pulled as well. So, and they never informed their customers of this. So they effectively removed the items that the player base wanted from the fr to get from these loot boxes and never told anybody while still charging people money for the loot boxes. Um, so this is a huge deal. They were just straight up stealing from their customers to the tune of about $420 million. And we do know now that they've been caught and they have been fined for this. And they were fined $9 million. The largest fine the Korean FTC has ever given out to a gaming company was given out to Nexon. And that's one of the reasons why I believe, I mean, if you put two and two together, the courts were delaying it they had to have known that this indictment and investigation was going on. And then all these delays started being requested. So the last thing we, we've heard is that there's been delays in the Korean case. The U S case is an appeals case and that is being, uh, it's, I don't know if it's been approved yet, but there, there's some weird stuff going on and I'll put it up on screen. So the, they applied for their case back in, on 9 15 23 is when it was officially entered so that's when the docket cause it uh the docketed cause and entered appearances of counsel that's when that was entered uh the e ecf the uh, nexon korea filed their ecf on 9 21 2003 the court sent back a mediation questionnaire to see if they can mediate this outside of court on 9 21 uh, 2023 then nexon filed for a streamline request uh request for an extension of a time to f file opening brief and applicant or a appellant nexon korea corporation so essentially what happened was uh nexon applied for the appeals process then the court sent back like hey we don't really want to deal with this here's some a mediation questionnaire to see if you guys can mediate this outside of court Nexon shot back, hey, we would like to streamline this case and skip mediation, but at the same time, can we also ask for an ex uh, an extension? And they required they filed this on the 8, 12, 18, 23. So they filed for the extension. Um, the request to streamline was approved. So they got their extension and skipped mediation. Um, but they appended the court amended the briefing schedule. So the briefing schedule, they had to basically do briefings by 1 17, 2024. 
So this was two days ago. Um, so the briefings just happened and the court is going to decide pretty soon whether or not the appeal process can go through. A bunch of other stuff happened as well. Um, there was a notice of appearance for Matthew Lee Farley. So that's Arnold and Porter, uh, Porter uh, Law Practices for Nexon. They filed an appearance notice that was on 11-20-23. So they got new lawyers in on uh, November of November 20th of last year. And then they added another, so they added, and then they, that was approved. So they added him as an attorney. And they also submitted an opening brief for review. And this was submitted by Nexon as of 12, 18, 23. They submitted excerpts of record. So they started sum submitting some a little bit of evidence. And this is on 12, 18, same day. And then they filed a clerk order. Within seven days of filing that order, they have to have a brief in paper format accompanied by a certification. Attached to the end of each copy of the brief, that brief is identical to the version submitted electronically. And then it gives some like rules. Um, cover color is blue, it has to be blue. Excerpts of record have to be submitted by Nexon Corporation within seven days. So they already started doing that. So they also, the streamline request for extension was approved. So they got their extension and they've already filed, they started filing their briefings. And then a streamlined request and extension was a, was requested by Iron Mace. And that was 1219. That was 12. So a month ago or yeah, a month ago, exactly at 1219. So they also filed for an extension. So they obviously granted, the court granted this extension. And then 1221, they received, the court received six papers, six copies of opening briefs from Nexon and then three more papers of excerpts of record, which is basically the easiest way to explain this would be the, they gave the court evidence that they think would help uh, sway the judge to grant them an, an appeal to retry the case. And they sent in three copies of excerpts of record in one volume that's Nexon did on 12, 21, 23. So the, we haven't gotten to the point where the actual, appeal has been granted or denied yet there's still kind of the process is started and it started in 11 16 23 or basically the questionnaire was filled out 9 22 23 and then it really started kind of in full on 11 16 23 because that's when the briefing was due or originally due and then they got asked for an extension for the first briefing and then that, that was uh, uh granted and they started giving all this evidence as to why once the briefing time happened, they started giving their briefing and they started giving evidence on why they feel, why Nexon feels that they deserve to have a chance at appeal. And then they asked Iron Mace for a briefing and then Iron Mace asked for an extension for their information, which is all pretty normal. This is all pretty normal. Nexon wants to extend because they want to waste Iron Mace's money. Iron Mace wants to extend to get all of their ducks in a row. And the longer that the game has already been out and the more customers have bought it and the more it's more widespread and global it is, the harder it is for the judge to say, okay, you got to shut this all down and refund everybody. Cause at a point it just becomes almost impossible. So if Iron Mace can kind of pro now that Iron Mace has an income stream, and the game is already out there. Now that they have the money to finance this lawsuit, they can kind of just keep it open. And the longer it stays open, the harder it is for the judge to feasibly shut it down later. Um, so this is to be expected. But nothing's really moved on the the appeals case. We don't really know much about what's being what's being given. All that's really being filed right now is clerk orders. They're submitting stuff that we can't see that we won't have access to. And I'll pull it up here, but we only have access to, so like here's an opening brief and we don't really have access to what these briefs contain. We just have access to like, here's what was filed. Um, there is some stuff that I'll probably go over on a live stream and I'll probably go over. I mean, a lot of this is just redundant. Um, stuff that they filed in the case and we've already looked over. 
um, just said in different ways. So I'll probably go over this in a stream, but I'm also going to make smaller videos about exactly what they have filed after I read through all of it. I've just kind of been keeping an, like a loose eye on it. Now that the game's up, I've been playing a lot. But yeah, that's kind of the summary of it. But the most important thing to me is that Nexon has a lot bigger issues right now because they already got sued for MapleStory. And supposedly uh, they might be under investigation for several other video games. You know, they found these these things in Maple Story. So what is to say that they haven't been finding these, like Nexon hasn't been doing this in a lot of other video games, right? And they're also finding ties to their subsidiary companies, you know, like anything that has any kind of cash shop in theirs so that has any chance, like a, like a loot box system or an upgrade system, that you kind of have to roll to see if you get the item you actually want. So if you ha exchange money for a token and then you exchange token for a chance at an item, that's basically gambling. And now what the FTC, the Korean FTC is doing is they're looking through all of Nexon's games and seeing what they've manipulated, what percentages they've manipulated and by how much. Because the thing that kind of all started this is Nexon filed for a patent on uh, basically variable loot chances based on how, like your play time, your friends list, all kinds of other stuff. The Korean FTC is now investigating Nexon for a whole bunch of stuff. So that might prolong the case, the Nexon Iron Mace case. We'll see how that plays out, but there's no real news about news about that coming from, I've been searching Naver, which is the Korean version, South Korean version of Google. And I've been checking all of the news agencies that have been kind of keeping up on it, but it seems to kind of have tapered off the news on this because of the, the FTC orders. So it might be a while for the actual ruling for Korea to come down. But as far as the dismissal in the United States, we're still, stuff is starting to be filed now. So we can kind of keep back up on it. Um, but right now it's just briefings and a little bit of information. There's only really four, five documents that we can look over. Uh, we could look at that too. I've kind of scrolled through it, but it just looks like the same thing. It's a lot of the same images and everything. Um, but I'm pretty actually, I'm actually pretty hopeful now that I've looked at some of this stuff, just cursory that this appeals probably isn't going to go through. Um, it, it seems like a waste of time. I think that the courts are going to kick this, the U S courts are going to kick this over to Korea. That's my outlook now. Um, because nothing that I've seen so far is really convincing, but I'll do more videos and I'll go over these with more in-depth uh, explanations. But yeah, I just wanted to do a quick overview of what's going on. Uh, I'm gonna give, there is one page, one document that's like 300 pages. I'm going to give that a review and read through that and then do a video about it. Um, from what I have read, it's basically just rehashing all of this stuff that we've already read uh, from the case, from the case itself. And they're presenting it to a new judge in the appeals case, uh, to hopefully get a different decision. There's not much new information from, from what I've read so far. Uh, I'm going to give it a thorough look through and make another video about that. But I'm pretty positive that this case isn't going to go anywhere. There's no like bombshells being dropped from Nexon and, their time is so divided right now with with all of the Korean cases. Not only are they do they have the case with Iron Mace in Korea, but they have the case about Maple Story and but like a uh, investigation for Bubble Fighter and other game and the FT Korean FTC is coming down on a bunch of other games from them. I don't think they have it. They, I don't think they have it in them to to take this one the limit. Um. So we might be seeing Iron, seeing Iron Mace release Dark and Darker on Steam, like whenever they're ready. But yeah, that's really it. If you want to take a look at the 300 page document that Nexon dropped, I'll put a link in my, I'm going to post it on my Patreon for free. And I'll post a link to that in the description of the video. 
So if you want to get a, your own copy of that 300 pages, it'll be up for free on my Patreon. You don't have to subscribe to my Patreon or my YouTube or anything. If you want to, I would appreciate it. If you like what I'm doing, click the subscribe button and the bell icon and follow. But yeah, guys, other than that, you guys have a wonderful evening. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Peace.